Now let's go through each one of those. The maturation of these, there are five of them. There are probably more than that, but there are five that I understand and know. And they have to be met at the right age, with the right kinship relationship, uh, and they have to be met first in three levels or three stages. The first stage that has to be literally and uh, materially met. The second stage they have to be metaphorically or symbolically met. And then we meet it by autonomy, by ourselves. Now some people try to meet their needs by themselves before they were met by the other. And they, that's an autonomy that doesn't respect the other because no other is valuable. And so one then becomes an isolated, autonomous, separated individual. So that in order to be an individual among other individuals, it has to be met first in dependency, literally, then symbolically, and only then are we autonomous <coughs> in a collegial way and in an interact. And what I'm highlighting here is the importance of interaction, that we become ourselves in interaction and not by our own efforts. Okay? And that I'm not downgrading autonomy, but it should come after benign dependency. Okay. Um, that first one is place. We need to have a place in the world. And the place in the world is inside something. And mothers know about that because the first place a child has is in the mother's uterus. Okay? And somehow the uterus and the psyche of the mother has to give information that the child is wanted in there and con they're conscious of the child in there. Because the mother's state at the time of pregnancy will have a massive effect on the neurological development of the child and the uh, psychological as well as physical development of the child. So simply being in that place isn't sufficient. The state of the mother at that time has got to be welcoming. And some mothers are not welcoming because maybe they were raped. Maybe they're having a child during a war. Maybe they're having a child with somebody that they didn't want to have a child with. So the, the, when we say place, it isn't simply being in there. Then that's the literal place. Then when the child comes out, it has to be in a metaphoric place or symbolic place. And the metaphor or even more than metaphor, the child has to live in the sight field of the mother. That's why the mother seeing the child, when a mother turns away and doesn't look at a child, the child doesn't exist. The child has to exist in the sight field of the mother. So eye-to-eye -eye contact, and, and, and neuroscientists know all about that, when a mother and a child are looking at each other, their brains go into synchronization. They really get linked and it organizes the child. And if a child then has been at home in the mother's body, in home in the mother's consciousness, so that when a child sees the mother looking at it, the child knows from the expression on the mother's face that the mother has an image of that child in their brain that's beloved. So the child at home in the mother's body will be at home in their own body at home in their mother's mind, will have a conscious image of the self in the mind. And then they are at home in the world. But people who haven't had that sense of place become wanderers. They're looking, where do I belong? Where are my roots? And sometimes you can check that that's a place topic when you have a client who's like a, more or less a, 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 a nomad, doesn't have any roots in. But some people don't have it here, and then they think, well, maybe I came from another planet. They kind of raise off the vertical, off the horizontal. Or maybe I should have been born in the 15th century. They're just not here. And one of the um, more regular ones is then they get spiritual, and a kind of spirituality where they say, I'm home there with God, but not here on earth. And sometimes that state leads to a slow form of suicide. 
because when they're dead, they're going to be have a place in heaven with God where they don't have a place on earth. So that place topic is important. So next is integration and unification of polarities, and the polarities are very varied. The polarity of owning what you literally inherited genetically from your mother and from your father. And that seems awfully simple, but what if you're a child of divorced parents who hate each other, and when you visit your mother, your mother says, your voice sounds just like your father's, I hate it. How are you going to own that part of yourself? Or you go to your father and she says, he says, you laugh like your mother, she's so empty-brained, I can't stand it. So how important it is to somehow own what we genetically inherited from our parents, because if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. So people may be trying to get rid of parts of their genetic inheritance. The other is hemispheres that left hemisphere and right hemisphere, and, and to own both. Sometimes some cultures uh, genderize hemispheres, how to own both sides. And then the sensory motor side, that part that is perception, and, and to be able to use smell, touch, hearing, uh, tasting, and you might think that that's automatic, but some parents don't like children to be so nosy and curious, get that out of your mouth, you get your fingers and everything, you get your nose and everything. And so the child can't use all his senses. And then there's the motor impulse. If the child moves one way or another, but says, stand up straight, you're so sloppy, you don't do Whereas children are exploring in play all kinds of motor behaviors. Okay. That's that sensory motor. And then there's the parts of the body that take things in the parts of the body that let things out, and what comes in and what comes out. That, uh, uh, how do we feel about that? Especially about what comes out. Tears, snot, <clears throat> stuff coming out of the mother's that she's so sloppy I can't stand it, or uh, uh, stuff that comes out of uh, the, the, from our digestive system, and the mother says, oh, you stink, or what comes out with, um, uh, from our sexual organs, menstruation. Uh, how, do we, how does the world look at that? My sister was told a long time ago when she was menstruating that that was bad blood. And so the, the thing that makes life, which is sexuality, has impinged on it, bad blood. And in some cultures, if a boy uh, has uh, an orgasm at a sleep, it's called night pollution. So how do we feel about, and how does the culture talk about all those things that come out of our body? And the last uh, polarity is maleness and femaleness. That though we are more, more or less of one gender, we have male aspects and female aspects. And how to be able to have both sides, that a man has male aspects and, female, and a woman has male aspects and how to own both sides. In some cultures, a man has to be macho and a woman has to be submissive and totally, fem quote, feminine. And if she shows strength, the man might put her down. Depends on how the culture looks like that. Um, and uh, that last one is going to show up when we talk about holes in roles, that, that maleness and femaleness component. Because when we unconsciously, and those of you who know about holes and roles, make a movie where we fill a male role in this movie, it will make exaggeration of our male aspect and have some hormonal shift. It won't change our agenda, but it'll make for some hormonal and attitudinal shifts. Okay, so that's integration and unification of polarity.